Good morning, church. Welcome to University United Methodist Church on this late summer morning and a beautiful day that we have. And uh, it's good to see your faces. Well, it's good to see your eyes. I'm Tim Ross. I get to be your uh, worship leader this morning. And uh, for those of you that are, this may be your first visit or new to us, uh, thank you for uh, choosing our church this fine morning. And uh, we'd like to have a little follow-up information if you would, uh, would give that to us. We do have some registries out in the Northex that uh, you could write your name down, give us a little contact information, and the church will follow up with a thank you and more information about our church. Also, if uh, you are not an online giver for the church, uh, you can take advantage of our white offering tithes boxes at the back of the church to... Uh, to drop your gifts in as you leave this morning. Also, this church uh, strongly believes in the, prior, in the power of prayer. And so if you have a concern or a joy that you would like this church to offer up to God in prayer, then we have our, our prayer cards that are in the uh, pew backs in front of you. Just give us the uh, necessary information on the card and uh, as you leave again this morning, drop it in the offering box at the back of the church and, and be rest assured that your concerns, your joys will be lifted up to God in prayer by the members of this church. You know, everyone has a song or songs that uh, are important in their lives. Uh, and when I saw the program for today's service, I saw two songs that fit that category for me. Now, the first one was, we're going to sing in a little bit, How Great Thou Art. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, Paul and I, we, we watched the online service, and later that afternoon, uh, Pastor Heike called us, and we were talking about the service, and she asked, Pastor Heike asked us, what was our favorite hymn? And without hesitation, I said, How Great Thou Art. And her, uh, Pastor Heike's response was, good choice. Now, why that's my favorite song? Well, I remember the first time I heard that song. Uh, I was in my mid-teens, and I grew up in a, a small country church, Oak Grove United Methodist Church in southwest Arkansas. And uh, every year in August, we had what we call the homecoming. Now, the homecoming started off your normal Sunday services. Then at lunch, we had a huge uh, dinner on the grounds, everybody brought their special dish, and then the afternoon was singing and music. So that was our homecoming, and it was at one of those homecomings that I first heard uh, a family member from our church play and sing How Great Thou Art, and I thought, what a wonderful song. Now, the uh, second song that has meaning for me today, you just heard. Shall we gather at the river? Being in a small church like I was, we, we kind of held all of our baptisms until warm weather <laughs> so that the water was warm. And I was actually baptized in a stock pond, Foster's Pond, which was just a, a little outside of, of Hope, Arkansas there. And it was a pasture, the easy to get to, uh, no brush around the pond, so the farmer took good care of it. So we could just park, get out, walk out into the water, and it just kept getting a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper. Uh, it was so muddy you couldn't see the bottom, but it didn't matter. But uh, there were several of us baptized that day, and the song that the congregation sang was, uh, Shall We Gather at the River? And the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows through the throne of God. So, as we prepare ourselves this morning for our music ministry Sunday, I offer this scripture to you, Psalms 95, verse 1 and 2. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. 
Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song.
remain standing. Let us go our statement of faith from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us bow. How great thou art, O Lord. How great you are this morning. On a morning where we can hear your voice. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. After a week where we were remembering what happened 20 years ago. So in this week of solemn remembrance, we honor the lives that were lost in the tragic act of 9-11. We give thanks to you for those who served and saved, rendered aid and assistance. We ask that you will give comfort to those who live with loss. We ask that we seek justice and peace where it is within our ability and rely on you when the ability escapes us. In this week where we remember 20 years of solemn remembrance, Lord, may we build what has been torn down. May we mend what has been broken. May we live your love when hate seems to reign. May we bear witness to the cause of peace. May we be quiet, singing in our hearts how great thou art. And so, O oh Lord, we pray for our nation our world, our leaders. We pray for those impacted by hurricanes and storms. We pray for those on our long list, folks that we are connected with, family, acquaintances. We pray for ourselves, for this church, for the music ministry. And today, God, especially, I lift up Heidi, Catherine, and Marjo. I pray for Richard, for Debbie. I lift up Dawn, Frank and Nancy. I pray the, for the friends and family of Fran. I pray for Judy, for Dan and Kim, for Jim, for Nancy, Carolyn, for Beth, for Gary, I pray for Joellen. I pray for all our shut-ins. I pray for all the ones who work this morning. And we will continue to work and serve in your ministry. Lord, all these prayers, we combine and put together in that prayer that you have taught us as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Scripture this morning is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voices go out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and runs its course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Lord, would you read along with me? May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Oh, this is where she got that from. So what's the occasion today, church? Why are we here? Why all these beautiful music People have asked me over and over this week, Bill, and said, so why, why today? 
Because it's Sunday. Did you know that? Because Friday is gone and Sunday is coming. Do you remember that sermon? That's not from me. Because Friday is gone and Saturday, yesterday is gone and Sunday is here and you are here and, and I am here but most of all Father, Son and Holy Spirit are here. That's the occasion. Happy Sunday, church. What a grace, what a privilege to be in his house and, and to hear his word through the psalms sung and, and played. Bring all the brass out and the trumpets and the bells and, and timpanies and the choir. Masks on, masks off. We're here. Happy Sunday, church. And then just to pray through and celebrate through that psalm that you just have heard and that you have on, on your bulletin with you. Oh, the glory about God. The heavens are telling the story of God. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech. Night to night declares knowledge. Look at the stars. Did you see the moon last night? Like an orange little slice. Yep, that's it. When I did my last preparation, I said, I got it, God. We need to proclaim your word. How can we keep from singing? And thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Thank you for Sunday. Thanks, God, it's Sunday. That's our Easter Sunday. Every Sunday we celebrate Easter. Did you know that? Happy Easter. H happy Christmas and Easter and all of it together. Bring all the music instruments because we have to celebrate that we're in the house of the Lord. Amen. It was about, um, not about, it was 20 years ago and five days yesterday that I got a call from my new husband. I'm only married once. We got married for a week and he calls me on that Saturday 20 years ago and says, just keep doing what you're doing. This is Germany, Heidelberg. I was somewhere training people in the telephone ministry and traveling from Stuttgart to Heidelberg back. And he was on base in Heidelberg working for the DOD. And he said, listen, I didn't know what was going on. Just keep doing what you're doing. And when you get home, turn that TV off. Don't even listen. Keep doing what you are doing right now. And I'll, I can't come home tonight, but maybe in a couple of days, we need to clear some things up here and just watch. Be a little bit more careful and cautious. And I said, that is a great introduction into my marriage. <laughs> now I know what I got myself into. Yeah. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't freak out. Just continue. This is new. This is new for a German little black forest mind to, to think there's danger that we cannot predict. Nobody knows what's going on at that time. And George got home a couple days later and, and everything was, we keep doing what we're doing. Do not interrupt anything. We are in mission. We will be in mission. A couple days later, we get the list or he gets the list of his colleagues in that wing in the Pentagon, the people who had worked for him, and he saw the names. They were friends, they were, they were good team members, the ones who had passed 30 names. And you know George. And there were silent tears coming down his cheek, and I kept telling him, and I said, listen, George, we need to keep doing what we're doing. And Bill and Beth, you won't believe it, but then we were looking for a song. <laughs> because besides many things, what combines us is our love for, for the hymns, for the good hymns, for the psalms. And you can guess which song we found, right? How can I keep from singing? And we were singing it ever since then for 20 years, up and down. There is a change of speed, of tempo in the middle of it. Good old Baptist preacher who composed that song. How can I keep from singing in the midst of what you're facing when you're confronted? 
And I know everybody has a story, and you can tell your story. What you did 20 years ago and how it, how it shaped you ever since today. How can we keep from singing? My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, though far off him, that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing, choir? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? And you and I, we're, we're all now 20 years older. Wiser, question mark. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a couple more pictures on the news since then. Of young men falling off airplanes as they're running for their lives. Of nurses burned out, exhausted, finished after a whole year of doing the same thing, right? Another wave, another wave of veterans ridiculed, making fun of. And then there's some kids this morning at that time where we're celebrating here in our neighborhood who are tired and sitting in front of TVs because there's nobody at home right down the street from us who will make them a breakfast. There's nobody home or, or they're not getting up. How can we keep from singing, church? And you and I were getting a sense of it. Yeah, yes, we want to celebrate it Sunday. What's the occasion? Easter. <laughs> we're getting a sense of it that the beginning of the psalm is not going to carry us through. We can't just do a little bit of la, 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 la. Yeah. We, we can't just say, the moon was beautiful last night. And the sun sets in general in New Mexico. Oh, and the cactus and the flowers are green. The desert is right now. And God has made all of it. That's great. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. The, the word for God there at the beginning of your psalm is El. That's a word for any God, of the God, of, of a God who made such beautiful stuff, that's not going to carry us through as we want to continue to sing that song, how can I keep from singing? We, we need more. We need directions. We need something that, that, that gives us a future so that we're not just saying the one who made it had good intentions. It was all beautiful, and we're trying very hard to, to keep it together. That little paradise, my backyard, you want to see the flowers? That's not going to carry forever. Amen? And the psalmist is with us, the one who wrote that song. He says, from verse 7 on, we need to define who that El, that God, the God is. It's Yahweh. It's Adonai, it's Hashem, it's the Holy One, because He's the one who knows how we're going to fall out of that creation. And we've seen it in too many pictures. He said, I need to give you laws, descriptions, they're right here. It's called the Torah, the law. The choir director asked this week, so what is the meaning of the law? That, that we know where we're heading. That we get a manual for the creation. And I don't mean just the flowers and the trees and the trees. I mean for everybody. How are we going to do this to live in peace and justice? That when we're celebrating 40-year anniversary, we may have a different story. We need, we need directions. La, 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 la. It's not going to carry us very long. I'm sure you heard all these comments and there were some really good ones yesterday about reflecting of what happened 20 years ago. One comment stuck with me and it was from one of the members of the SEAL who went into and he was asked and he said, well, what do you think is the biggest danger, the threat right now in, in the world, in this country maybe? And he said, it's not the Taliban. 
Now, this is someone talking from close experience. The biggest threat right now is that people forgot to do what they did, our people in this country, American, what they did 20 years ago. Maybe the biggest threat is that people are losing the Torah, the law, that it is very clearly for everybody described what is the right thing to do and the right thing for a lot of people without thinking, without having been prepared was. While everybody swings between power, super women, to save the life. Maybe the right thing was to not make it. It was clear for everybody. Civil courage, right? What's the better character is justice. And we're not going to interview first, well, which party are you going to vote for? Uh, and what do you think about masks? Then we didn't have that problem. But people just knew it. I thought it was a murder. I can share with you today where this can go if we continue the way of forgetting the law. I come from. I'm with the comment and say maybe the biggest threat is that people forget about basic slavery and justice. No. It's not negotiating. It's not about me and my neighbor. We would not already know our husband or sister or children. It's not damage to any other person. It's fairness between us and each other. The best deal. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure in right. The eyes so that we see what we need to see. And not just the way that we put action where we need to put action. That it brings us freedom. Not the other way. And keeps us protected. And keeps us together. Do you remember that? Look at the verse. There's a family who cares. And that my brother down in Guatemala will know there's people this morning who are bringing the trumpets out so that he has a future and doesn't have to run from gangs. And that my sister in Ghana will know there's people who are standing here and sitting in the pews and singing with these masks on because they know it's about la, 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 the law of the Lord. Loud and clear. That's what we do. It's Sunday, church. It's not Friday anymore. Stop playing Friday. Stop playing Saturday. It's, it's Sunday. And I know your looks. I, I can read their faces even with their masks on, Tim. Right? They say, oh, here she goes again, right? Because the next thing I always preach to them, but they still come back, is to say, what about your kids and your grandkids, right? What about you guys? College, all you colleagues, do they know about the law? The law, the good prescriptions, commandments, ordinances, the law that refreshes the soul, that gives you exactly instructions. Do not drop out of class. I can make that deadline, right? Yes. That's what the law says. I will be a leader of the future of this country. That's what the law says. Look it up. I can show you. Yeah. What about your kids and your grandkids? And if you don't have kids, what about your neighbor's kids? What, what about your neighbor kids here in this neighborhood? We adopted them, remember? Neighborhood initiative. And you're going to give me all these speeches. Believe me, I am a mom. I went through this. And I said, do you want to know? You really, really know what they say? The toddlers, right? They will do this, la, 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 yeah? Yeah, that's what they do. 
That's not what you meant, right? No. Take the fingers out of your ears. And the teenagers, they will say, they don't do this anymore. They will just say, yeah, mom, I did my homework. I Googled it. <laughs> right? What do you mean research? There's research. I researched this, what the law is. Which source did you use, please? This is the source. Do you want to touch it? Don't Google everywhere. Because we're going to get lost, we're going to slip back into Friday. Karl Freitag, as the Germans say, the crying Friday, where there's crosses and people get killed. Everywhere. You need to go to Sunday. What's the occasion? It's Sunday. Friday's gone. So the good news this morning is, and I, I promised I would keep it short, is that God, Yahweh, not El, not some God who made the creation, but Yahweh, Adonai, the Holy One, is a father too. He, he knows how to have kids. Yeah. And he's not going to let us do what we're doing. La, 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 we don't know, right? And God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him, in the son, will have life, e eternal life. He knows us so well that he says the word, the law, that we say too complicated, right? We don't know how to read it. Too big, too compact for me. Doesn't fit my reality, does it? The law, I'm going to break down. The law became flesh, became one of us, looked like you and I, and, and lived among us. And we saw, we saw its glory. Oh, this is how it goes. Stop playing complicated. It's what God is telling us. I'm going to send my own son and he's going to teach you he is the law, and he will teach you in a way that now you understand. Not a whole book. I know that's too much. Nobody reads books anymore. Right? But I'm going to break it down to ten commandments. Do you remember? Ten commandments when Moses came down from the mountain. And if you say, oh, that's too much too, then, then I can summarize it and say, you know, Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and soul, and, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. What's complicated about that? Which part of that sentence do you not understand? And if that's still too complicated, we can go back to the Ten Commandments. You heard that several times. If you don't want to learn the Ten Commandments by heart, the law, and your kids won't, and your grandkids won't, la, la, la. Just teach them, I am the Lord your God, period. That's what I am. And if I am your God, I'm yours. I will not let it happen that in 20 more years, we're going to be like where we are today. But I want to move you towards freedom and life. Bring all the trumpets out and the French horn too and the bells and the timpanies. We need to wake up. It's Sunday. You know what's going to happen first when you do this is it's going to point the finger back at you. It always does. <laughs> yeah. That's what's happening in that psalm. Because by the time he's understanding it and said, I can read that. It makes sense now. How can I keep from singing? He's starting to pray for himself. Verse 12, but who can understand one's own errors? I can't. But the laws Jesus Christ is teaching me is that, hey, even you, the very reverend doctor, Heike Miller, you have a little groom, room to grow here in this area. Clear me from my hidden faults, it says here. Clear me. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Then I shall be blameless if you teach me first. In other words, he's going back to the old recipe, role models. I, I want to start with me. I want to start and study a little bit of the law that he says, I am yours now. 
And, and then I will move forward and you will see it's working all the time. Someone's watching you. It says, where do you get that clarity and that strength? That you're not just amazed about the flowers? That you not just know there is a law and I don't know how to touch it, too complicated. But that I'll start with a, with a little bit of, of my life. And then I will end up exactly where the psalm ends. That the meditations of my heart and the words of, of my mouth and yours will be, watch this, acceptable. I don't say brilliant, not outstanding yet. It's very down to earth. Will be acceptable at least in his sight. In his sight. That's a star church. My time's up. What's the occasion? The occasion is it's Sunday. The occasion is that we're celebrating, that despite of what's going on in the world around us and right now and here, we're standing and singing and praying and playing in the gap for the ones who cannot be here. That we know that God loved us so much that he will start teaching us first. And that through teaching us, we will not stop from singing. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in his sight. Our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. No storm can shake my inmost calm. Well, to that rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble in their fear and hear in their death knell ringing. When friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them are winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. to this Sunday and remember all this day long it is Sunday church and live it and sing it through how can we keep from singing amen may the Lord watch over your comings in and goings out from this day on and forevermore in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen Thank you.